Hi YouTube, and this is JTrain997, and I'm back this time with my review of the Marvel Legends 80th Anniversary Series Colossus and Juggernaut 2 pack. Now I get a good look at them both here in the packaging. Um, this does appear to be a repaint of the Build a Figure Juggernaut, but they gave him these two alternate hands, the shredded Juggernaut helmet, and this beat up Kane Marco head. So that was that alone, besides the repaint, would have been, probably made me have bought this guy again. On the side of the box here, you've got some very nice artwork of Colossus, mainly with him fighting Juggernaut. On the other side here, though, there's just some pictures of Juggernaut. And on the back of the packaging, you've got a read-up of both of them, and a very nice comic cover of X-Men 102. So let's zoom in there. If you care to read it, you can pause it right there. So, again, that's just such a classic cover. I love it. Nothing on the, on the bottom of the packaging, on the, on the top, rather. This very nice little embossed Marvel logo. So, not too much at all to say about the figures and packaging. Let's open them up. And here we have Juggernaut and Colossus out of their two-pack. Now, before we actually start with Juggernaut, I mean, before we actually go on to Juggernaut, we'll be starting with Colossus. I will say that pulling him straight out of the packaging, I don't know what it is about the way they sculpted his feet. He seems to want to naturally topple over a lot, but despite that, you can get him standing. And there's a lot of very nice, bright, metallic chrome for his skin. You know, the classic X-Men Colossus as I remember him. You know, for those who are looking to feel, you know, fill out that arcade roster, this might be the guy you're looking for, him and the new Nightcrawler. Uh, he does have alternate fist, which... That is a bit of a pull there, but... Get that in there. Oh, this little cup popped off. Get that back on. Put his fist in here. So, a little bit of effort needed to pull the hands out, but once they're out, they're just fine. So, Colossus has a very nice range of articulation to be so big. His head has a very nice up and down. Does a full 360. His arms are on a ball joint. And despite his costume design, they can still do a full 360. They go out to here, spin at the bicep, single jointed elbow, and as you've already seen, the wrist have a hinge and spin. So, also a very nice ab crunch right there. Very nice for such a big figure. Uh, he does turn right, the belt is covering up his waist joint, but he does a full 360 there. His legs go forward. Don't really go back the way they designed this piece. Let's go out. I'm actually noticing as I'm spinning that quadricep joint, there's a bit of red paint right along the edge of his leg. I might touch that up with a little silver paint. Nothing too major though. He has a double jointed knee and he has an ankle joint with, let's see here. The ankle joint's very stiff. That's part of the reason I was having trouble posing him when I first got him out. Uh, it looks like there's a pivot in there. Yeah, again, it's just very, very stiff. But it's freeing up as I move it around. So, let's put Colossus back down here. Oh, his belt spun out of the way. Colossus is, um, I've definitely wanted him in his classics, classic X-Men outfit for a while now, despite the fact that I actually bought this figure from Select, and I really love that figure. Uh, speaking of, let's actually get a comparison of him in here. All right, it took me a second to find where I had stuck this Select Colossus, but as you can see here, he's a bit bigger than the actual Legends figure, as he should be. That's usually one of the uh, selling points of Selects, is how big they are. And trying to get him standing at his full height here so you get a good comparison, but again, just something about those ankle joints don't want to stand. But here we have them side by side. As you can see here, they're very similar as far as their actual detail, with the exception of this Colossus got the square buckle and this one got the more classic circular logo. I still like them both. Obviously, it just goes down to, do you want a little bit taller Colossus with a lot less articulation or a lot more articulation for a little bit less height? So, also a quick comparison in here to the Wave 2 of the X-Men series Colossus. Now, this is no contest. I didn't like this guy when I bought him. I didn't like the modern costume. The figure felt almost hollow and brittle. I know you guys didn't see a review of him, but I just, he's been in a drawer ever since I bought him. Uh, this guy is 100% better if you're looking for just the a good Legends Colossus. The only thing this guy had going for him was the alternate head sculpt with the beard. So, it's 
Let's put him back here. I definitely dig this figure. Um, I had a few issues posing him, but again, that's easing out with times. You can see there, you know, I've just had to put a lot of pressure on his ankles and they're freeing up as they go. But let's move on to Juggernaut. And here we have Juggernaut out of his packaging. Now again, this is a re-release of the Build-A-Figure from the Wave 1 X-Men figures they released a couple years ago. But they've done so much to them, it's really not asking a lot to buy them again. They went with a much more classic paint job on Juggernaut. They give you all these extra features. So let's actually get a look at him with this helmet real quick. He's got these whited out eyes, which I didn't suspect. Oh, the camera's not looking at his eyes. So you can see there's no pupils at all, which I found odd, but you know, I'm sure there's a comic out there where he doesn't have the pupils actually drawn on. So. Surprisingly enough, these fists pop out just fine. Easier than Colossus, actually. So, popping these back in. Let's actually go ahead and swap out both hands. Oh, crap. His entire arm just came off. Um, not too surprising. Again, this was a Build-A-Figure, but I figured there'd be a little more permanence in that with this, you know, obviously not having ever come apart. So pop his other hand in it's the exact opposite of Colossus the hands don't want to pop back in but they come out just fine uh, I think that's good now unfortunately there isn't a way to get this head out of the helmet it is permanently sculpted with the helmet which I think would have been a lot you know a lot cooler features if the helmet was a separate piece and you got just a regular Kane Marco head beneath it. Again, there's a lot of nice detail on this guy. He's got the bruised eye. His lips all swollen and busted up. And then his uh, broken helmet, which you can see here in comparison to his standard. Uh, there's a lot of nice silver paint. Like the helmet's just been ripped open. So that's a really cool little feature. Popping the head on here. If I can't. So that, <laughs> I don't know, that looks kind of silly to me. He's, without the helmet on, that looks kind of odd. I mean, Juggernaut's supposed to be, you know, super immense to the point it's almost comical. So I guess that is accurate. It just kind of seems silly to pose him without his helmet on. So let's get that stuck on there. And as you can see, that's a really cool feature. Um, for your battle dioramas or what have you where they just shredded his helmet now they can get to him telepathically and you can see both of his uh, alternate hands are kind of more open palms which again a nice little feature that I wouldn't have even expected them to put in here I don't know if maybe that was sculpted for the build a figure and they ended up canceling it and reissuing it here but I honestly doubt it so we'll pull his helmet off as far as his articulation this arm wants to pop off constantly. His head, obviously, as you can see, pops off, does a full 360. Some very actually nice up and down to be so small. Arms do a full 360, go out, spin at the bicep, single jointed at the elbow, gotta kinda watch this cuff piece, it'll slide down and block it. Spin and bend at the wrist, very nice hinge there. Um, this one doesn't want to pop out at all. This one, it just seems like i got to keep forcing it in. Very nice abdomen articulation, as you can see here. Some very nice up and down. Spins full 360 at the waist. Legs are on a ball joint. Go out to about here. Don't go back too much. Out to about there. Single jointed knee. And have an ankle joint with... Is there any pivot in there? Actually, there is. So that's very nice. So... Real quick, um, I'm not going to put him back in his regular helmet, just for the simple fact uh, I don't really see the point, seeing as I'm not going to display him with it. But we will get the other Juggernaut in here, which, where did I put him right here? Oh, there he is. And you can see here the differences between the Build-A-Figure and this new release. This Juggernaut obviously is a much darker brown on pretty much everything, this Juggernaut has a belt. Uh, this Juggernaut actually has pupils on his helmeted head. So, I don't know, it honestly comes down to if you 
which one do you prefer? I like the classic paint more. Um, honestly, I like everything about this guy more, with the exception of the, with the exception of no pupils on the helmeted head and no belt. And honestly, can you? I think you can actually get this belt off him. Yep. Pull that juggernaut apart. Oh Lord, please don't let me break this. <laughs> oh, he popped right apart. Belt goes on. Pop him back on. And there you go. Juggernaut's now got a belt. It's not looking good for this guy staying in my collection. Um, I don't know. He does have a nice classic style of paint. I'll find something for him to do. But yeah, this is an all-around great figure. He was great when he was a build a figure. They've done enough here to warrant buying him again, surprisingly. So let's move on to a final thoughts on this set. Hey guys, I know I said a final thoughts, but I remembered I had my select juggernaut, so I figured I'd throw him in here for a quick comparison. Again, much like with the Colossus, you can see there's a bigger scale difference with the select. He's much bulkier, but honestly, unlike with Colossus, where I feel like the scale makes him pop even with your regular X-Men, I think this guy easily wins out. Um, this guy had next to no articulation. This guy's got plenty, and he doesn't sacrifice barely an inch to get it. So this guy's an all-around better figure, in my opinion. And that being said, let's move on to a final thoughts on the set. So at the end of the day, these guys are brand new. They're supposed to start hitting targets, I believe, August 1st. Um, they're not street dated, though. So if you have the DPCI, which is the item number, they'll pull them out of the back and let you buy them now. This is a $60 set, though. Now, I do think that is way too much, just like the fact that they're raising the price of a single figure like the Thor, Iron Man, and Cap they're doing to $25 apiece. This should have been a $40 pack. Now, these are two immense figures. You know, it, you're pretty much buying a Build-A-Figure and a regular figure, so it hurts a little less than buying the Hulk Wolverine 2-pack for $60. I do think these are, you know, would it be much, much better at $40? I still do like them. If you miss this Juggernaut, again, I've got the old Juggernaut belt attached, so, you know, don't expect you're going to get the belt unless you're doing like me and cannibalizing it from the last Juggernaut. Um, this Juggernaut's an absolute must-own for an X-Men fan, in my opinion. They've given him a lot of great extra features here that I think warrants buying him again. This Colossus is pretty great. I don't know if he's going to replace the Select Colossus in my collection, but he's leagues better than the last Legends Colossus we got. So that being said, it is a great set. I wish it wasn't expensive as it is, but I do recommend picking it up. And that being said, this is JTrain997, and I'll see you soon, YouTube.